Well, hello, YouTube. Captain Dave sitting in the Jetty Wolf at the Jetty Wolf Fish Camp, Jacksonville, Florida. This is Captain Dave Sport Fishing YouTube channel. And you know how I was thinking, and I hear this from time to time, is I know for myself, I watch a lot of Scotty Kilmer. If you don't know who Scotty Kilmer is, he's a old car mechanic. He is the number one in the entire YouTube when it comes to talking about car repair and stuff like that. He's got billions, I think it is, views. Billions. So, he's probably a multi-millionaire. I'm not really all into him talking about how to clean a mass air sensor or anything like that. But what I always enjoy is he sits at a desk and he answers questions because he has, I guess, like a forum or something or, you know, a website where people post questions. And he just sits there and talks. Now, granted, he's doing this all the time. If you have ever seen Scotty Kilmer, you can't stand. His wife must have black eyes because his hands are just going all over the place. But what I enjoy the, one of the most of what he does is he just sits and answers questions or tells newsworthy things about the car industry. He's not fixing cars but he's just chatting about it so I am going to talk about this moment seasickness because I just had something happen the other day it was Sunday today is what Tuesday or Wednesday or something uh, seasickness now, you would not think that an inshore coastal, that's what I do, fishing charter would have to deal with sea sickness that much. But at the jetties, where the St. John's River dumps into the Atlantic Ocean, many times, yeah, that's real ocean with real current, with real structure. And I get a lot of seasickness, or the sea flu, as you could think of it. And on Sunday, it happened for the second time, something that is so crazy. I had some trip booked from one of these booking agencies, which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of. But there's so many of these damn booking agencies out there. It's ridiculous. Now, I got this absolute late notice. It was 6 o'clock at night for 7 the next morning. Now, that's not a big deal. I've had calls at 9 o'clock. So, I get this call and texts and emails and all this stuff from this booking agency about taking four guys fishing. So I kind of scramble. See, my usual thing is week to two weeks because I'm old school. That's the way it was before dumb phones. Now it's an instantaneous gratification world out there. You got to have it now, 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 now. It's a real joke. But I get this, I get this call from this booking agency. I take these guys. They're all... They're all not young, but they're all in the 30s, maybe early 40s. They seem like pretty pretty good guys. Um, we go to the jetties. We start out by catching some croakers because I told them I want to hook them up with a black tip. And then, you know, you get four guys that are kind of like going to be competitive. So I figured, hey, this is a natural. After that, we were going to try to get some other bait or whatever and maybe go up into the river and see a about the bull reds okay that i haven't yet caught 
So we're out there at the Chetties. I'm filling the live well full of croakers. I've got one out the back of the boat that hasn't gotten hit yet. And I'll simulate what happened. Okay, one guy is standing right here. I'm behind my console. One guy is standing right here. Another guy is standing right here. The guy that was standing here, I don't even think he had a rod in his hand. He turns around like this and goes and goes to plant his face into my console, right in the corner of the console. Let's see, I got cup holders, I got a throttle, I got an old speaker box, and I got hard as a rock aluminum. Well, the guy that was standing here sees him falling. I mean, it is slick, slick calm. And he's falling, and his buddy catches him and then sits him down on the cooler here I got behind my, my uh, leaning post. Needless to say, he completely, in a snap of a finger, a blink of an eye, passed out. He was gone. Mm, just gone. Set him down, and he was just gone. Well, all of a sudden he comes to, and he doesn't even know what the hell's going on. He goes, what happened? Okay. So, we start doing a little freak out. They do. I don't. Because you know why? I've seen it before. I'll tell you that in a moment. They sit him down. They're all like, oh man, get him, get him some water, get him comfortable, whatever. I think about maybe two minutes goes by. He's sitting here. He does it again. It's like a seizure or something. He goes, his arms straighten up. And he goes, <gasps> like that. Now, I'm not telling you this story to embarrass this guy. I feel very sorry for him. I feel very sorry for him. Well, one of them tells me, because he told me, he says he went on a charter in the, in the Gulf of Mexico one time and he caught like a 100-pound yellowfin tuna. Well, one guy says that that happened on that charter too. Caught the 100-pound yellowfin tuna and went into this seizure passing out, falling on his face or whatever. So I start kind of wrapping things up. And then all of a sudden, he goes through it again. <gasps> like this. And he's gone. I mean, he's like gone. No can he, I mean, for just 10 seconds? I don't know, five seconds? Just gone. Well, we're packing shit up here, man. And I'm pulling anchor and we're, we're heading back to the boat ramp. And he's sitting back there. And he doesn't even know what's going on. So the whole charter lasted one hour and 30 minutes. Now, of course, I had about three and a half hours into it already. Got up at 4.30, went to the bait shop at 5. Got the boat and water by 5.30. Uh, I don't know what I did. And all of a sudden, they show up around 7.00. So I got hours into this as I normally do. I'll tell you another for instance. That's totally explainable, unexplainable. When they were walking away, he was fine. He apologized. He said, oh, I don't know what's wrong. You know. But I've seen it before. I had a good customer that was in the Navy. He was an officer in the Navy. His name was Don. One time he brings his younger sister. She's this little skinny thing, about 21 years old. She's sitting on the side of the boat, right on the side of the boat. Actually, she was sitting on this side. She's sitting on the side of the boat and we're talking, we're shooting the breeze. This is back when you could fish along the Navy base and not be a threat to the national security of the entire United States democracy. 
okay? When we could sit along the Navy rocks, which is also known as the United States Navy Fish Preservation Zone now. We were sitting there, and I think we were float rig fishing or doing something. And she's sitting on the side of the boat. She didn't have a rod in her hand, thank God. And she literally is sitting there, and just like a snap of a finger, she just falls forward. And my deck paint back then, because this was years and years ago, was a lot rougher than it is now. Needless to say, over the years, it's worn. I've repainted the deck multiple times, and I've used just pigment. I haven't used it with the aggregate in it or the abrasive or whatever you call it. So needless to say, she falls forward and she runs her face across my deck. So we pick her up and we just sit her butt down on the deck and lean her back. Just totally gone. She doesn't even know what the hell happened to her. I say to Don, she just had a seizure or something. And he says, I've never seen this before in my life. I mean, that's his, that's his little sister. I mean, he's never seen it. Don calls us like mom or something. Somebody, he wasn't married. So he called somebody and says, get down to the boat ramp quick, quick, quick. And we went back to the boat ramp and I think I don't know if Don went with her. I can't remember, but we somebody hauled her away. So that's just another one. Was that seasick too? Was the first guy seasick? I don't think so. I think it's something in somebody's head. Because I'll give you another for instance. I've been doing this a long time, so I got, I got plenty of stories for you. I took a friend of my dad's fishing a guy that he used to work with, with his uh, church group or something. I think I had three or four guys. This is before I even had the Jetty Wolf here. I had my old 23-foot Maycraft. No top, rigged up for absolute light tackle fishing. I mean, I just designed that boat. I took the T-top off, believe it or not. We were rounding the South Jetty. Here's the rocks. We were coming up the beach or something from getting pogies or mullet or something. And I go around the South Jetty. And I mean, it's not calm. And I got a guy, Ed, standing where the camera is. My console was very much like this with a huge windshield and a grab rail around it. But he was on that side. And I'm trying to drive. And he's, he's like falling into me. Falling into me constantly. And I went, Ed, are you okay? Stand up. Because I had a leaning post and my butt was on it. And he was holding on. And he turns to me, gets right in my face and goes, Dave, I'm so seasick. I'm going blind. I went, what? I can't see. I can't see. And I'm like, oh my God. And I slowed down once I got in the river. And said, Ed, you go up here and you sit up here with the other guy. There was another guy up here and there was one guy behind me on the leaning post. I had like a live well leaning post in my old boat. And Ed went and sat and I think we had to take him back. But this guy was saying he was so seasick, he was going blind. Now, we kind of laughed about that for a while. Not at his expense, but I mean, laughs that somebody could be so seasick, they're going blind. So, that's one of these things that, uh, here it is, I don't even really go offshore anymore, far. That's the reason I gave it up is for seasickness. In my old Maycraft, we'd be heading out, and our first stop was 20 miles. And we'd get out five, eight, six, nine, whatever, and maybe be jigging up some bait. And it was so common that here we are just jigging up bait. And I'd have somebody on a little spinner just catching some cigar minnows or something. And they would just be so seasick. They'd be on the deck and hanging over the side, throwing up their lower intestine, you know. And they'd be laying on the deck 
crying and begging to go back to the jetties. So if you always want to know why I do what I do, as the subscribership might want to know, is I got sick and tired of that. I mean, I remember one time, you know, I mean, back then things were so different. And I mean, that's a whole nother story. Now, well, there wasn't these booking agencies. There wasn't 400 guides on every street corner of this damn town, okay? Everybody is a, you know, offshore expert. and all, I mean, it's just unbelievable now. But back then, I might do, you know, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and at least two, three, four of those trips, we're heading 20 miles offshore. And I'll never forget one time, it was like three days in a row. We get out, we're like six, eight miles offshore, stopping on a, on a pile of rubble or something that's stacked with cigar minutes or we're catching bait. And it happened, boom, boom, boom. Three days in a row, I got people laying on the deck, crying and, oh, I'm gonna, I'm, oh, I'm so seasick, take me back. So, I mean, I was like, screw this. That was only a 23-foot boat. But I don't think it would have mattered if I had a 43-foot boat. Because I still hear the stories. I get a husband and wife on the boat or a guy and his girlfriend. And it's always the same thing. Oh, we went on our honeymoon or our vacation down to Cabo San Lucas or Cozumel, Mexico. This is when people actually used to go to Mexico. I don't believe anybody goes there now. Unless you're crazy, I don't know. But I've heard it hundred times. Oh, we went out, you know, they're like harkers down there too at a, at a, at a carnival. Who wants to go fishing? Who wants to go fishing? You know, they got the little guys standing on the dock trying to get the tourists to go fishing. Well, these people would always go fishing. I've heard this story a hundred times. And they get on there with another couple. And one person out of four or six is fishing. Reeling in dolphin or a sail or a marlin or a wahoo or whatever happens to be. And everybody else is laid out damn near dead. Or in the cabin. So that's sort of how it ends up all the time for me. But this past Sunday, I couldn't believe it. It happened again. Just people passing out three times, just like old Don's little sister. I thought I'd never see that ever again, but there it goes. It happened Sunday three times with a, I don't know, a 36 year old dude, you know, I'm sure other people have no problems. Maybe it's just me. I got all the great luck, but we're just fishing the jetties and it is slick calm. And this guy, <clears throat> he's done. So there you go. That, I don't know if you'd consider this a wolf tail or a walk always says do a wolf tail. Well, I don't know if this is a wolf tale or not, meaning a jetty wolf story. But since I'm just doing a lot of work on the boat here and don't have anything till coming up Friday when it's going to start blowing out of the northeast, which is actually a, a, a good thing. Start blowing nor'easter. You know, oh my God. That's like something you can't even imagine in July. So we're going to get some weather here. And I got three guys from Indiana and hope they don't pass out. So I'll see you on the next one. That's, it's not always fishing. There's just so much more. You know, I always say actual fishing in the charter business is about 20, maybe 25% of the entire scope of the business. 
you're in the people business, number one, and you're in the situation business. Well, that's enough, and I will talk to you on the next one. Maybe we're going to get some goddamn red bass footage here, some big old red bass or something coming on. I just booked a trip five minutes ago in October. Oh, I can't wait. To quote, to quote a subscriber, old Larry, I can't wait to get up in the morning and it's 40 degrees. Yeah, baby. Come on.